Good morning, everyone. My name is Kyle Lake, and I will be presenting our webinar today. And the webinar we're going to be talking about is PADS 3D Library Management for both Netlist and Integrated Projects. All right. So hopefully we're going to cover and you'll learn today how to import those 3D models for both components as well as mechanical objects into your 3D layout design. Okay. Uh, also, I'll be talking about how to adjust the orientations for models that have been imported. So occasionally uh, the orientation or how it's lined up with your decal in the actual layout tool, the 3D model won't be lined up correctly and there's some easy ways to fix that within the 3D view. Then we'll talk about how to actually save these mapped models into your design specific library. So there's very minor differences between Netlist and integrated flow projects uh, and I'll be talking just briefly about that as well. And then finally, after we've gone ahead and saved those models into our library, we'll actually be able to reuse those 3D models that have been mapped in our future designs. So it's a very simple process. That way you only have to import those models once, map them to your components, save it into the library, and never have to worry about it again. Okay, so again, my name is Kyle Leake. I work for Oasis Sales, and I'm, I'm an application engineer that covers uh, the PCB tools that Mentor Graphics offers, as well as some of the simulation tools. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with Oasis Sales, uh, we are a premier rich distributor for Mentor Graphics, now a Siemens business, and we have been for over 18 years. So we cover uh, everything within the PCB design space, simulation space, as well as we go into cable design and FPGA design and simulation. Okay, so if you live in those states you see down there below, we are your reseller, so please feel free to reach out for, to me for uh, information on any of the other products that we offer, or if you'd like to have any other information uh, of what we discussed today. So we also are pairing with TriLogic on this webinar series. So TriLogic is our counterpart in the Northeast and East Coast of the United States. Uh, they are based out of Boston, our Andover, Massachusetts, to be exact. And they have been a product design community for over 30 years, and they are happy to help their customers with solutions from Mentor Graphics, just like Oasis Sales, as well as Omnify for product data management. Okay, so they also provide training and consultation. So you'll see their states that they are responsible for down below as well. And if you don't know who to contact within TriLogic or Oasis Sales, please feel free to reach out to me and I can definitely get you the contact information for the person that's responsible for your territory. Okay, so here's a, just a venue, visual representation of the respective territories for both Oasis Sales and TriLogic. So if you're in one of those uh, states, I hope you are familiar with your reseller. If not, please, again, feel free to reach out to me and I'll get you the correct person to contact. So if you like what you see today, uh, we have a quite a good repository of webinars that we've done in the past, and you can access those by either going to either oasissales.com or trilogic.com to find those archived webinars, or you can look up directly at our YouTube channel at uh, Oasis Sales Tempe. So we have webinars ranging from hyperlinks for simulation, pads, standard, standard plus and professional, expedition. Uh, so we try to cover a broad range of content, and uh, please take, feel free to take a look at those. Here's my contact information. So if you do have any questions about what we discussed today, if you'd like to evaluate potentially pads or any of the simulation tools or just have any general questions, please feel free to write that down or maybe take a quick screenshot. And I'll show this again uh, at the end of our session today. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with GoToMeeting, uh, there is a chat box in the GoToMeeting client. Hopefully you see something similar that I've posted up there on the slide. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to write those into the chat box and I'll get to those if they are uh, relevant to our info today. Otherwise, I'll follow up with you after the event. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's hop into the actual webinar about how to do 3D library management for both Netlist and integrated projects in the PADS flow. Okay, so first I wanted to talk about uh, the different offerings in the printed circuit board design and simulation space that Mentor Graphics offers. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar, 
Uh, Expedition is an enterprise PCB design solution. It's a very powerful layout environment that allows for data management capabilities as well as concurrent design capabilities for design teams that may be spread throughout the US or even across different continents. Okay, so you can be working on the same schematic or the same PCB design with other users. Uh, today we'll be specifically talking about pads and that is a long-standing kind of project-based PCB design tool. It is still a very capable layout tool where you can do some very complex technologies and designs using pads. It just doesn't have the enterprise wraparounds for those concurrent capabilities for design, as well as some higher end data management capabilities. Okay. We have done a lot of webinars on hyperlinks, and that is a PCB analysis and verification tool. It can do signal integrity simulation as well as power integrity, and also has some EMI checks that you can run directly on your design. So hyperlinks, we like to call that a CAD agnostic tool. It works with any layout tool design. So you can easily bring that in and do simulations on any design that's been done in any tool. Okay. And then finally uh, on the PCB design is Valor. So Valor is kind of on the manufacturing side. It does a lot of DFM and uh, assembly checks for you after the board has actually been placed and routed, allowing you to maximize your yield. All right, so this is a good slide to show how PADS has really evolved in the last few years, okay? So before 2014, it was mostly just PCB design, okay? PADS was just a PCB layout tool. Then we're kind of evolving this tool to really allow you to do anything within the electronic design space. So currently in the solutions for the PADS flow, we have PADS standard, which is just schematic capture and layout tool. Okay. PAD Standard Plus, which in includes some advanced rules for high-speed nets, as well as some simulation capabilities with hyperlinks. Okay. And then PADS Professional is the high end of PADS uh, currently. And what that is, is it's really a, a, a PADS flow, but is driven from an expedition-style layout tool. Okay. So I do see a question from Karen that says, does this webinar apply to PADS Pro as well? And the 3D library management here is really uh, applicable to all PCB design tools that Mentor offers. So uh, you can use the same methodology here, whether you're using PAD Standard, Standard Plus, Professional, or even Expedition utilizes the same type of 3D library management scheme currently. Okay, so before we hop into the meat of the 3D library management, I did wanna talk about a little bit about what the difference is between Netlist and integrated projects. Uh, I know people might be confused on this different type of terminology, and I just wanted to kind of make sure everyone's familiar with what the differences are there. Okay, so Netlist projects have been the long-standing uh, way that PADS designs have been completed, okay? So with this, you work with symbol libraries and potentially separate parts and decal libraries. Okay, so within the schematic capture tool, whether you're using PADS logic or PADS designer, you have to point to symbol libraries. Okay, so they live separately than the part and decal libraries that PADS layout utilizes. All right, and it's called a netlist project because there's an actual physical netlist that's passed back and forth between schematic and layout that's generated in order to do forward or backward annotation. On the other side of things is the integrated project. So we'll be talking about both flows today. And the integrated project really is an integrated environment for you. So it, it's contained in a database that stores all of your connectivity, constraint data for schematic and layout. Okay, so this database is not something that the user has to maintain, create, or really worry about. It's all maintained by the tool. It just allows both the schematic constraints and the layout tool to always be talking to each other to make sure everything's in sync. Okay. Another huge difference between the Netlist and integrated projects is that the central library is utilized in an integrated project. And the central library holds all of your symbols, cells, and part data for that project that you're working with. Okay. So uh, another big difference, but it's specifically for 3D, is that between Netlist and integrated projects is they are saved to different locations. So when we actually push our model mappings back from the layout tool into the library, 
in the Netlist project, they're going to be saved in a different location than they are in the integrated project. Okay. But the good thing about this is, just like I said before, for PAD standard, standard plus, professional, and even expedition, the way that we import models, the way that we map them, and even the way that we push them into the library is the exact same. The only difference is the location that they're actually saved to. Okay, just a little bit of advantages on why you might want to consider an integrated project over a netlist or vice versa. Okay, so within the PAD standard plus space, you do have the ability to choose between integrated projects or netlist projects. Okay, and there's usually three huge advantages that I talk about when I talk about integrated projects. Uh, and thanks to the database, the first one is that we have real time notification if the schematic, layout, or constraints are in or out of sync. Okay, so there's just some notification lights that are easy to see within the PCB design. And all you have to do is double click on those notification lights to start that forward or backward annotation process. Okay. Another advantage of the integrated project is that we do have the ability to utilize the PAD library tools. And the PAD library tools, again, accesses that central library that I talked about earlier. And within the PAD library tools, we can create or edit all the symbols, cells, and part data directly from that one environment. And the last advantage that I talk about usually with the integrated project is that it utilizes the constraint management system that is accessible both from the schematic or the layout tool. So if you're unfamiliar with this, uh, the constraint management system, it's a spreadsheet-based system that looks very similar to Excel where you enter in all of your design constraints, and again, that can be in the schematic or the layout, and it's always the same constraint that you're editing. Okay, so netless projects definitely do have some advantages of their own, and uh, most of them have to do with flexibility, in my opinion. The ability to actually work with service bureaus by sending just design-specific libraries is very easy to do with the netless project, since you're actually pointing to physical symbol libraries and part libraries one at a time. It's very easy to trade that data on or off. And due to the fact that it's physically passing netlists back and forth and not tied together through a database, is it's much easier to break apart the PCB and PRJ or schematic file if you're using PADS logic. You can break those apart from each other and then bring them back together at a later date much easier than you can within the integrated flow. Okay, uh, I'm not seeing any more questions, and that's totally fine in the chat box. Just want to remind everyone that if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out or put those in the chat box, and I'll look at those as we go along. All right, so hopping into the 3D environment within PAD layout. And again, this is essentially the exact same 3D environment that we have in PAD Standard, Standard Plus, as well as PAD Professional. Okay, some of the dialog boxes look a little bit different in the PADS Professional space but the core functionality remains the same. Okay. So within the 3D environment, we are able to do 3D visualization and placement of our components. Okay, so you can kind of see on the right-hand side on that top picture, we have a 3D environment within that pad layout tool showing com mapped component models as well as imported mechanical assemblies. Okay, so very easy to import both types of those models. It supports many different types of formats that we can import. And the most common that I work with with different customers is .step, which everyone should probably be familiar with, or SAT models. And it also uh, covers some other ones that we can talk about a little, a little bit later. Okay, so within PAD Standard Plus and Professional, you can do concurrent 2D and 3D placement. Uh, we can have the 2D view open up side by side with the 3D view and do placement in either the 2D or 3D. And we can see how that is reflected in the other environment. Okay, so within the 3D environment, we can also do uh, clearance checking, essentially 3D DRC. All right, so we can set these up and it will check for board and mechanical objects such as uh, component to enclosure. Uh, and it will actually give us dynamic graphical feedback by highlighting the components that may be physically touching each other. So it's really easy to bring in uh, the mechanical enclosure and map that or directly into our design and see if we're gonna have any height clearance issues between tall inductors and the enclosure, for example. Also, you have the ability to do a batch DRC for the entire design to highlight any issues that you have. 
Uh, and in the bottom right hand side, you will see that we have the ability to export 3D PDFs of the entire design. We can actually manipulate the 3D view just in Adobe Acrobat can be really helpful for design review or just sharing data that way. Okay. Also, we do have the ability to export the entire design as step model, once again, for import into a mechanical tool. Okay, just some of the capabilities that are included with the 3D design. Um, I won't go too far depth into the capabilities that we have today, but we do have the ability to measure point to point or minimum distance between components. We also have the ability to add cut planes in the X, Y, or Z direction to really narrow in exactly what we wanna see in that design. And again, like I said, we have that batch DRC. So we can do step import, export, as well as create those 3D PDFs that can be really useful for sharing with people that don't have a PADS license. Okay, so MCAD collaboration. This is included with all PAD standard, standard plus, and professional licenses. So I just wanted to have a quick blurb on this to make sure that everyone is aware that you do have this capability if you're currently on a PAD standard, standard plus, or professional license. And this is driven directly through the 3D environment where we can exchange data in real time with all major MCAD design tools. Okay, so it utilizes a ProStep format, which is an IDX file, okay? IDX standing for incremental data exchange. And that data exchange happens very seamlessly between our 3D environment within pads and any mechanical tool uh, for that is able to bring in this type of format. And so again, this is included within the all of the pad suites. We do have webinars on this on our website. So if this sounds interesting and useful in your current environment, please feel free to uh, check that out or ask me for any more information. Okay, so actually talking about the 3D model mapping. Okay, so this process is exactly the same whether we're using a netlist or integrated project uh, for bringing in those step models for our components. Okay, so first, obviously, we have to invoke PADS 3D. And if you don't know how to do that, all you have to do is open up your PCB design and go view PADS 3D. Okay, so that'll open up the 3D design, load any mechanical models that you might have imported for the enclosure or components already, and allow us to start looking at that environment. Okay, so if you've played around with the 3D environment, hopefully you've seen decals that don't have step models already assigned to them do have a height associated with them. So if you place a height attribute on a decal while you're creating this component, that will be extruded from the assembly outline in that exact height, okay? So it gives us a rough indication of what that height looks like, but we wanna bring in those 3D models to be more photorealistic, okay? So all we have to do is select one of those uh, all we have to do is select one of those components without a 3D mapped model and import it by clicking on the import uh, model icon. So again, up in the screenshot where my mouse is right now, we have a 3D toolbar and there's a lot of different functionality in here that will access uh, that 3D. And I do see a, a quick question about uh, the SolidWorks accepting the format that uh, works with that MCAD collaborator. And SolidWorks will work as long as you have the CircuitWorks plugin. It will accept that IDX format with uh, the MCAD collaborator. So CircuitWorks, I know, is a, an add-on option into SolidWorks. So as long as you have that, you'll be able to work with that. Okay, so coming back to this, if you have now imported your 3D model, the first time it's gonna come in, it's going to line up the origin of our 2D decal to the origin of the actual mechanical model. Okay, so sometimes that works out perfectly if your mechanical team has created those 3D models uh, with the origin the exact same way that you create them in the 2D space, those will line up perfectly, okay? But if that doesn't happen, it's very easy to adjust the, both the orientation, the rotation of those models, as well as how close to the board that is, okay? So we can define a seating plane which will uh, place that component directly on the PCB. 
So from within that 3D toolbar, we're actually able to manage mappings. And this allows us to see all of the map models and unmap models if we don't want those to be mapped anymore. Okay, so I'll show that dialog box, which can be very powerful to work with as well. Okay, so this is where we kind of slightly differ between integrated projects and netlist projects. Okay, so this is actually saving those 3D model mappings into our library location. Okay, so these uh, processes are exactly the same between integrated and netlist projects. Okay, the only difference is step number one, as we can see here. So uh, with an integrated project, again, we utilize that central library. So every time that we push these mapped models into the library, it's going to be saved into the central library for that integrated project. Okay? Netless projects, of course, don't utilize that central library. So they will be saved to the location of your reuse folders. Okay? And if you aren't familiar where that actually is, very easy to find out where that reuse folder is. If you just go tools, options, file locations within pads layout, you can see where that reuse folder location is. Okay. So that's where those models are gonna be saved in both integrated and netless projects. And then the rest of the process is the exact same. Okay. So uh, we map the models to the decals and all we have to do within that 3D toolbar is click on the update library icon. So what the update library icon will do is allow you to click on checkboxes for those mappings that we want to save into the library. Okay, so you don't have to save everything that's mapped. You do just have to click on the checkboxes for what you want to be saved. Okay, so that's all we have to do. We push those into the library, the respective library locations for integrated or netless projects. Once they have been in there, uh, I've got a little section down there on how to reuse those models in other projects. So again, this is the exact same type for integrated and netless projects. Okay, so if you're utilizing a different project in an integrated flow, you just have to make sure you're pointing to that central library location. Um, and usually with an integrated project, uh, companies just have one central library. So that makes it a little bit easier. But within that netless flow, again, we do have to point to the reuse folder location in our file locations. Okay, so in order to bring those previously mapped and saved models, they, we have to, again, instantiate the 3D view and just click on the 3D toolbar, update models. And this will, again, show us which models, which decals have models assigned. Okay, and then we just click OK to bring all of those models in. All right, so uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and actually hop into a demo. Um, I do see some projects with, or some questions within the chat box. I'll definitely follow up with some of you um, on some of those questions. I, I don't think those would be good to cover right now. I do see Beverly uh, has a, a question on how do we know what an integrated project is versus a netlist project? That is a great question, Beverly, um, and I'm sorry I didn't cover that previously, but I'll actually go ahead and open up our pads designer tool. So I'm currently working with VX 2.4. Okay, so this is the most current version. It came out uh, late August, potentially early September. And if you don't see some of the features that I'm working with here, that just may be due to a versioning difference. Okay, so this is pads designer. And so we have netlist projects. We see we can create a new pads netlist project or a pads integrated project. All right, so uh, we see that this has a gray icon, this has a blue icon. In our recent projects, we see we have different icons associated with these different projects. So we can see that the blue icon, that's gonna be a PADS integrated project, and the gray icon is going to be a PADS netlist project. Okay. Also, within the actual design, very simple to tell if you are using a netless project or an integrated project just by looking at our tools drop down bar okay so within the tools drop down bar if we see the pads library tools or the constraint manager tool here we know that we're going to be in an integrated project you do not have access to those tools within this a netless project okay another very simple way to check is if i just go to setup settings 
And in our first initial uh, setting here under project, we'll see a central library path for an integrated project. So if you don't have a central library path, you know that you are using a Netlist project and you will see symbol libraries here where you have to actually point to all of your symbol libraries. Okay, so right now uh, I'm currently working with an integrated flow project just because I've got that central library path as well as the uh, pads library tools and that constraint manager there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up a pads layout design. Okay, so again, this is a 2D design that's been placed and has not been routed yet. Okay, so in order to invoke the pads 3D tool, all I have to do is click on view pads 3D. And that's gonna go ahead and open up our 3D design. Okay. So you can see that I can actually have 2D and the 3D window open up side by side. If I select a component in the 2D space, you can see that we're actually gonna be dragging that in the 3D space as well. Okay, so there's some of that DRC notification. It's highlighting in yellow, notifying that we're having some sort of collision between components there. Also, I can actually select a component in the 3D space and move it around and you can see that it will actually move in the 2D space as well. So you can do 3D placement or 2D placement. Okay, so a very important dialog box. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drag this over to my right hand side. It is the 3D display control. So this is our 3D toolbar that is always opened within the 3D view. All I have to do to click on that 3D display control is the icon for 3D display control. This is a, a pretty important window here because it allows me to turn on different design objects and control my 3D options, okay? So right now we can kind of see through the board, we can see our components on the opposite hand side or the flip side of that board. If I wanna rotate it around, I can still see the components on this top side. So if I want, I can actually go ahead and turn on the solder mask and we'll actually see the solder mask. And we can adjust this color to uh, whatever type of solder mask color that you're working with currently. Okay, I can also turn on the silk screen and we'll actually see reference designators if you have those visible in the 2D layout space. Okay, just a couple of other quick uh, kind of helpful options within the 3D display control is the ability to click on drive 2D view and follow 2D view. So these options on the top right hand side, if I click on both of those, essentially we're gonna have a mirrored view in the opposite space than what we're working with. So if I zoom in on this 3D space, it'll zoom in directly on that 2D space as well. Again, if I, if I zoom or pan or and the 2D space, it's gonna mirror that exactly on the 3D space. Okay, so now that we've got our 3D view instantiated, I can, again, rotate this. And like I was saying beforehand, we can see that some of these decals actually have a height associated with them already. Okay, so that's coming in if you're using a geometry.height attribute on the actual decal or within the parts database, that will come over directly into this 3D view. Okay, I can quickly use these icons on the 3D top or 3D toolbar to jump to different locations or different views for top side, uh, side view, or bottom side. Now that I've got my 3D view, I can actually go ahead and start importing our 3D models. So again, I'm working in an integrated project and these are gonna be pushed back into our central library. But if I was working with a Netlist project, again, to find the location that we're gonna push those 3D models back to, I go tools, options, file locations, and it's gonna be using the reuse location. Okay, so that's where we would push our mapped models back in the Netlist flow. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start importing some models. So first I wanna click on a component in the 3D space and click on the import part model. So you'll see that this is not highlighted. I cannot click on that icon when I don't have a component selected. So first I'll select a component, click on that import part model. 
and this will allow me to browse to our different type of models that we can import. So you'll see all of the files of type is uh, down below. Again, the ones that I work with the most are the SAT as well as uh, STEP files. Okay, so uh, I know that this is an SOIC 24 pin component and I've got that named very similarly to that. So all I have to do is click on that and I do have the auto align with 2D cell. Okay, so again, that's gonna bring in the origin of the 2D cell to the origin of the actual 3D model. Okay, so I'm gonna click on import. And that's gonna go ahead and import the step models for that component. Okay, so very easy to see how that works. All right, so again, it auto automatically mapped those components and aligned them correctly. Okay, if I'd like, and if it's not mapped correctly, I can click on these rotation symbols to rotate it correctly or uh, actually in any direction. Okay, so if it came in upside down like this with the pins not connecting to those pads, I can easily just rotate that that way. All right, so that's all I have to do. If I want to uh, accept that, just click OK. And you'll see that it has been brought in for all similar part types in this design. So as soon as I bring in a part model in 3D for a certain part type, it's going to map it for all of the similar part types in our design. Okay, so a very important dialog box use, utilizing 3D models is the Manage Mappings dialog box. And that's right where my cursor is right now. You'll see it says Manage Mappings. If I click on there now, we can actually see which parts currently have models, okay? So it gives us some information on the model name, as in the 3D model name that we used. And again, it was that SOIC 24, the part number of the actual part in the 2D or in the layout tool the cell or package type, if you're unfamiliar with the cell terminology, that is an integrated flow attribute. And then the mapping. So the mapping is going to say either local or library, okay? So mapping local means it's local to this design and has not been pushed into our library location. Okay, so the manage mappings dialog box, box if it does say local, uh, I can easily just click on the right arrow with it selected and push it out to the parts without models, okay? If I do that and hit okay, it's going to delete that mapping that I just included. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and import that one more time because that was the correct part. Okay, so that part's very simple. Uh, it came in perfectly on the first time. So let's go ahead and look at one of these LEDs. I'm gonna go ahead and do about five different models just so we have a good library to work with and import them into a different project or a different layout. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and import a step model for our LEDs. And on this one, you'll see that the pins are not going through the actual through hole pins on that decal. Okay. So that's why when we first import it, we have these easy arrow directions to actually go ahead and make sure that it's perfectly on those pins as well as on the board itself. Okay. So now what I can do is we can actually see that this uh, component or that step model is not coming in that well for us. Okay, so it's not actually on the pins. I'll turn off that solder mask so we can see that those leads are not coming through those pins, okay? So what we can do within here is very easily first define the pin pad center. So I'm gonna define the pin pad center and select which lead I want it to be in the middle of one of those pins. So I'll click on align, align pin pad center. And you'll see once I hover over one of these pins, it's going to highlight it in a magenta color, okay? So that is where I'm going to align our middle of our pad to this pin. So I'll click on that there. And then the actual pin itself, and you'll see that it automatically maps that pin lead to the pad, okay? So we still have uh, its offset in the Z direction here. So I first did the align pin pad center, 
Now, if I hit define seating plane, I can actually define where this component is mapped onto uh, the actual PCB. So again, I'll highlight where I want this to be mated down onto the PCB, and we'll see that it's perfectly aligned now on those pins, as well as perfectly seated onto the PCB. Okay. So I've done that for the first instance of these LEDs, and now as soon as I hit OK, all four of them will be that exact same orientation. Okay, so very, very simple to go ahead and make sure that you're utilizing the same spacing, the same seating plane, and everything's oriented correctly. Okay. All right, so for example, this one came in vertically wrong, and I can make sure I define it correctly. Okay, so it might be difficult to see, but this step model does have an indication of polarity for pin one. Okay, and we can actually see on our silk screen on this cell definition, we have an icon for pin one there. Okay, so I'm trying to make sure that I've got this indentation right here on this component lined up with pin one. So very easy, I can understand where it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And unfortunately, I forgot to define that seating plane. So you'll see that the pins are just barely touching uh, the leads themselves. Okay, so after I've imported the first time, I no longer have the ability to use those uh, rotation arrows directly in the layout tool. So if you've done this incorrectly, it's very easy to go ahead and edit this on the fly. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, because I do want to adjust this orientation, I'm going to click on that cell and hit edit decal. Okay, just like in pads layout, just exactly the same as pads layout. I can hit edit decal and it's gonna open up our decal editor in both a 2D as well as 3D space. Okay, so this is the decal editor that everyone should be somewhat familiar with in the uh, pads environment. Okay, so you can see that we have our pad stack shown. Um, so it's correctly oriented right now. Again, within here in the, in the decal editor, I can adjust the rotation or the flipping of this component, if it's upside down. Okay, so all I have to do now is define that seating plane. Okay, so this is a through hole component, so a little bit different than an actual, just a SMD part. So I wanna define that seating plane. I'll click on define seating plane in the align 3D models box. And this will actually allow me to click on where that seating plane is. So if I click right here on the bottom of this component, we'll see that it kind of looks incorrect because these pins are trapezoidal shaped and probably not gonna stick all the way through there. So once again, I can define that seating plane. And if I get it just right, I can actually define the seating plane on that uh, trapezoidal shape there. That'll pop it up a little bit and look about perfect as you're putting that through hole through those pins. Okay. Easy as that. So now what I have to do is just file exit decal editor, just like in uh, normal use of this tool. And I do see a, a question from Jason Ford that says, what if the same part has different orientation? Jason, that's a great question. So if I am editing that decal um, and I've done the orientation and rotation, just like I did, you'll see this dialog box pops up that says apply decal changes. And do I want to apply the changes to all component types with this decal or just the one that I have selected now. So you'll see in my 2D layout space here, I've got just, I think that's U23 selected. And there's also another component utilizing that same decal just to the right of it. So if I click all, all of these parts are gonna have the same orientation. Otherwise I can just hit selected and just use 23 is gonna use this orientation. Okay, so very simple. All right, so I am going to use all in that particular case. Okay. And we'll see that now uh, that has been fixed and it looks uh, really good and perfectly mated to the board itself. All right, okay, so the last component I'm going to actually do is just this big uh, BGA here. I'm going to click on it and import that BGA, 264 pin BGA. Okay, so 
So again, easy to adjust the rotation and it automatically is defined where that seating plane is. Okay, so now that we have, I think about five different types of models map, maybe just four, um, I'm gonna go ahead and look at that manage mapping dialogs box once more. That'll open the manage mapping dialog box. Again, we see the model name, part number, cell name, as well as if it's locally or library mapped. Okay. So now that we've got these mapped in there, they're both uh, oriented correctly, they're defined correctly on the seating plane of these parts. I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm gonna push these back into my library. Okay. Again, in this particular example, I'm utilizing a central library. So it's gonna be pushed back into central library, but the methodology is the exact same in the Netlist project. All right, so if I want, I can click on the update library icon here. Okay, so this will pop open the update libraries and we will have to physically select which components I want to push into the library. Okay, so if I select all four of these mappings, they're gonna be pushed into my library. Okay, so we'll see the alignment is manual for all of these because I did a little bit of different orientation for all of those. And if it's in the library already and we see no, Okay, so it's an easy way to just overwrite uh, mappings already in a library. We can see if it's in the library, and if I want to overwrite them, it will. we can do overwrite all in the library or prompt for each conflict, and we can choose which one we want to use. Okay, so I'm gonna overwrite everything in the library since they're already not in the library, and just hit okay. Okay. All right, so now that, that the library has been updated, again, if I hit the Manage Mappings dialog, we'll see now that that mapping has changed from local to library, all right? Okay, so now these models are ready to be used in a different project or a different PCB design, okay? It just so happens I do have one already defined. So I've got a, a new project, in uh, an integrated flow. Again, what's important about checking here is that I have it pointed to the same central library, okay? Or in the case of a netlist design, I have the same reuse folder location defined in tools, options, file locations, okay? So that's all we have to do. We have to either be pointing to the same central library that we already mapped those models to, or the same reuse folder. That's the only difference between integrated and Netlist flow project. Okay, so um, just some quick placement within here. I'm gonna, this board has just been, the outline has been defined, and I've gone ahead and forward annotated these parts so they're all on the origin. I go view pad 3D, that'll instantiate that 3D view for me. And we'll see that they already have those 3D models defined for us that we just pushed into the library. Okay, so if I actually go ahead and uh, select just the symbols here, select all of these symbols real quick. And um, this is a place by schematic type methodology. I have all of cross probing turned on, so they've already been selected at the origin. I can uh, right click in here and hit move sequential. So as soon as I hit that, it's gonna ask me if I wanna just start placing with all of these components one at a time. And I can really quickly just place all the components that I just had selected. Okay, so this is some simple, oops, uh, that's the LEDs. I'll put those over there. Just some very simple place by schematic techniques that make it very quick and easy to work with. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. I'm gonna maximize our 3D view, and we'll see that uh, we have 
these models mapped directly for there. Okay, so these are already been pushed into that central library. Very simple to do. Now we still have some that have not been mapped in this particular design. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to select that component here, and I'm going to import a model for that. Okay, so this is a different design, but we can still push it back into that library. Okay, so if I go ahead and import an SOP 48 pin model for that, it will again import that model for both of those there. Okay, and then I might as well go ahead and define these capacitors very quickly. Okay. And last but not least, I'll just do this 14 pin SOP as well. Okay, so uh, again, I'll look at the manage mappings dialog box and we'll see that we have uh, three different components with library mappings and three different components with local mappings. Okay. Once again, I'm going to hit the update models, or update library, excuse me, and it'll allow me to select all of those components. And actually push them into the library. Okay, so I'll hit OK. And now those are pushed back into the library. All right, so now that we've pushed those back, uh, we can come back into our other design. And now, if we actually do an update models, we'll get those same exact model mappings for us. Okay, so let's just keep an eye on those different components. We'll have, uh, briefly on the back, we'll look that there's no capacitor models defined yet. So we should see some of those be brought in, as well as, uh, a few of these components up here, these uh, SOPs. Okay, so I'm gonna hit update models. Okay, so we see that all of these components up here were brought in, those 48 pin SOPs, as well as the 16, 14 pin SOP. And then if again, if I rotate to the back, we'll see now that we do have some capacitor models defined there. Okay. All right, so that was all I was gonna to cover today. I hope that was informative and shows how easy it is to go ahead, assign models and push them back into the library. So if you have any questions uh, on any of this or wanna talk more, I do see some questions that I'll follow up with you uh, afterwards, our session today. All right, so here's my contact information one more time. Please feel free to jot that down or take a screenshot and uh, let me know if you have any questions or want to discuss this further. Uh, and thanks again for attending. Have a great rest of your day.